Do you have issues with soil compaction? Are you finding that you have a hard pan underneath your topsoil that water and roots are unable to penetrate? Perhaps you're having water and fertiliser run off your paddocks. Or after years of use, your soil structure has degraded and you're looking for a way to improve it. So I'm Sarah and I'm from Delmade and today I'm going to walk you through just some of the scientific uh, evidence behind subsoiling and how it can help your soil structure. Uh, this isn't a sales video, we're not trying to sell you a subsoiler, we just wanted to give you some of the background information that might help you work out a good way to improve your soil structure. Okay, so starting with soil compaction. So what happens is, say you were to walk out into a paddock and grab a ball of soil. If you're gonna roll that up within your hands and clump it down as tight as you can, once that dries out, you're gonna find that there's no air left within the soil. So when we're running constantly over our paddocks with tractors or machinery and we're pulling out crops, what you'll find is that your soil tends to compact down. Obviously over time with irrigation and rain, all of these things compress our soil, which means that there's less aeration within the soil. The other issue that uh, soil compaction causes is a hard pan and that's when we find that the layers of soil on top so our topsoil that's being worked consistently is nice and light and fluffy but underneath where that soil is not getting worked we tend to develop a hard pan and this is especially present in clay soils. So what are the effects of soil compaction and hard pans? Um, when we're looking at this kind of thing and we're cropping consistently, some of these effects are unavoidable. So they do have to be dealt with um, in one way or another. But what we're looking at is when the soil is compacted, there's less aeration. So there's less oxygen, water, and nutrients available to the plant. In a nice light fluffy soil, water and oxygen, they all move around well in the soil, which makes them nice and readily available to root systems. The other problem that happens with soil compaction is that roots can't penetrate. So if we've got a really tight soil, you can imagine if you're out in a paddock and you're trying to drive a star picket or something like that into really hard ground, imagine being a tiny little root trying to penetrate into that soil. You're gonna find that you're not gonna get very far. So the more of a large root system that your crop has, the more nutrients and water that it's gonna uptake and the better it's gonna perform in the long term. The effects that we find with a hard pan are often that we can't get the root system down below. So in that top layer of soil, we're consistently relying on the nutrients that are up there to support our plants. Whereas we've got all of these nutrients that are trapped below the hard pan, which we can't actually access. Okay, so here we've just got a bit of an example of just um, a pasture from a heavy clay soil. As you can see, we've got a really quite shallow root system under here. Uh, and a lot of horizontal roots. So this has come off a very heavily compacted soil um, where the roots haven't had much of a chance to dig down deep at all. So when we're looking at the benefits of subsoiling, um, we need to look at our plant roots as straws. So basically our plant roots are where they uptake all the water and oxygen and nutrients that they need to grow up nice and big and strong. So you can imagine that the longer that your straw is, the more that you're going to uptake. So when we do have compacted soils and uh, shallow roots, our plants don't perform as well as they would if we had nice long roots. So the benefits come in um, when we take an implement such as a subsoiler and with these nice long 525 mil tines, we get below the subsoil and it actually, as we drag it through, shatters that hard pan. So all of those nutrients that were locked up underneath in the subsoil, become more readily available to plants up higher in the soil. We also increase the aeration in the soil, which is really good for soil structure and helps all of um, the nutrients and water and oxygen to move around and be more available to the plants. And so when we shatter that hard pan, we also give the roots the opportunity to move down into that subsoil um, where they can take up more nutrients once again. Water is another thing that's affected uh, by soil compaction. So what you'll find is if we go through with our subsoiler, then our water has somewhere uh, further to drain to. So once we break that hard pan, the water can drain below the subsoil. So in really dry years, that's really good because there's water available in the subsoil. And in wet years, it's excellent too, because that means that 
the water drains down into the soil rather than running off or causing erosion. So that covers off on the main benefits and effects of subsoiling and how they can help out with soil compaction and hard pans. One thing I do really want to um, just mention is that if you do decide to go down the road of subsoiling, just to make sure that you're subsoiling at the right time of the year for your property. And it's really important to have a discussion with your agricultural advisor or your economist uh, if you're not confident yourself. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you soon.